I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. We are continuing in Mosiah. The church first really organized under Alma, being a loose religious association before that. And now there's a lot of dissensions in the church. The rising generation is turning away from God, and they're drawing some of the, old, some of the elders away with them. And so we've instituted the policy that if you are in sin and refuse to repent, then you're excommunicated. Now, it was in the year 120 BC that Alma and the people of Limhi joined Zarahemla and become subject to Mosiah. All these dissensions and everything, it says the rising generation. Remember, Alma joined them only four years after Benjamin gave his great address. So it's the rising generation. It's those who are too young to understand King Benjamin. So we're talking nobody over the age of 10. They're the ones rebelling. This, is, this happened over the course of about 20 years. So we're now approaching about 100 B.C. And we pick this up now in chapter 27. It's a little long, so I'm going to read only the first 16 verses in this video. And we will finish it in the next video. So here we go. Mosiah forbids persecution and enjoins equality. Alma the Younger and the four sons of Mosiah seek to destroy the church. An angel appears and commands them to cease their evil course. Alma is struck dumb. All mankind must be born again to gain salvation. Alma and the sons of Mosiah declare glad tidings. And now it came to pass that the persecutions which were inflicted on the church by the unbelievers became so great that the church began to murmur and complain to their leaders concerning the matter. And they did complain to Alma. And Alma laid the case before their king, Mosiah. And Mosiah consulted with his priests. And it came to pass that King Mosiah sent a proclamation throughout the land round about that there should not any unbeliever persecute any of those who belonged to the church of God. And there was a strict command throughout all the churches that there should be no persecutions among them, that there should be an equality among all men, that they should let no pride nor haughtiness disturb their peace, that every man should esteem his neighbor as himself, laboring with their own hands for their support. Yea, and all their priests and teachers should labor with their own hands for their support in all cases, save it were in sickness or in much want. And doing these things, they did abound in the grace of God. And there began to be much peace again in the land, and the people began to be very numerous, and began to scatter abroad upon the face of the earth, yea, on the north and on the south, on the east and on the west, building large cities and villages in all quarters of the land. And the Lord did visit them and prosper them, and they became a large and wealthy people. Now the sons of Mosiah were numbered among the unbelievers, and also one of the sons of Alma was numbered among them, he being called Alma after his father. Nevertheless, he became a very wicked and idolatrous man, and he was a man of many words, and did speak much flattery to the people. Therefore he led many of the people to do after the manner of his iniquities, and he became a great hindrance to the prosperity of the church of God, stealing away the hearts of the people, causing much dissension among the people, giving a chance for the enemy of God to exercise his power over them. And now it came to pass that while he was going about to destroy the church of God, for he did go about secretly with the sons of Mosiah, seeking to destroy the church, and to lead astray the people of the Lord, contrary to the commandments of God, or even the king. And as I said unto you, as they were going about rebelling against God, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and he descended as it were in a cloud, and he spake as it were with a voice of thunder, which caused the earth to shake upon which they stood. And so great was their astonishment, that they fell to the earth, and understood not the words which he spake unto them. Nevertheless he cried again, saying, Alma, arise and stand forth. For why persecutest thou the church of God? For the Lord hath said, This is my church. And I will establish it, and nothing shall overthrow it, save it is the transgression of my people. And again the angel said, Behold, the Lord hath heard the prayers of his people, and also the prayers of his servant Alma, who is thy father. For he hath prayed with much faith concerning thee, that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth. Therefore, for this purpose have I come to convince thee of the power and authority of God, that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith. And now, behold, can ye dispute the power of God? 
For behold, doth not my voice shake the earth? And can ye not be also behold me before you? And I am sent from God. Now I say unto thee, Go, and remember the captivity of thy fathers in the land of Helam, and in the land of Nephi, and remember how great things he has done for them. For they were in bondage, and he has delivered them. And now I say unto thee, Alma, go thy way, and seek to destroy the church no more, that their prayers may be answered, and this, even if thou wilt of thyself, be cast off. And now it came to pass that these were the last words which the angel spake unto Alma, and he departed. So a couple of things to note here. A couple of things to note. First, there is a great persecution in the church. Or not in the church, but from without the church. And it gets bad enough that the king has to lay down the law. So the people, this isn't just, you know, taunting them a little bit, ridiculing them, making fun of them. This is a true persecution that is a violation of the law. So Mosiah as king, he enforces the civil law. Alma enforces the ecclesiastical law. And the persecuting of the church is a violation of the civil law. Mosiah, he, he puts it down. He says, no, we're not doing this. And he puts, sends the proclamation throughout all the land. And it does bring a lot of peace. So the people are, I wouldn't say pacified, but they might just be scared into not acting out again. But Alma and the sons of Mosiah, they're going about secretly to destroy the church. These aren't just, they are just unbelievers. Alma and, his, and the sons of Mosiah are the hardcore anti-Mormons of their day. Like John DeLynn. They, they, their purpose, their goal, is the destruction of the, of the church of God. They, they don't just not believe in it. They want to eradicate it. And then the angel comes. I'm trying to keep this video as short as possible. I just want to mention that Alma the Younger at this time, he's not a teenager. He's not even in his 20s. He's an older man. He's probably in his late 30s, early 40s. I personally estimate him to be about 42 years old. Now, Alma fled from King Noah in about the year 140 B.C. We are now in about the year 100 B.C. If Alma is about 40 years old, then he was born in Helam shortly after his father flees from King Noah. That's why the angel tells him to remember. Remember what had happened there. You lived in Helam. You know what was going on. Now, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't old at the time. I think they flee from the city of Helam when he is... 14, 15, but he's not a young man. He has had time to entrench himself in his wickedness. It says he became a very wicked and idolatrous man. He was the hardcore apostate, and he has been that way for at least 20 years when the angel appears to him. Now, I will kind of analyze the ages again and show you why I think Elma was about 40 years old in a later video probably near the end of the reading of the Book of Alma, when I can talk about all of his descendants. But we'll get to that later. Right now, we're going to end this one, and we will read the rest of this chapter in the next video. So I will see you there.